in a little bit. Okay. Left Is that that? Go on, go on. for next time, I'm sorry. But if you're here, we have to sing a breath. I guess we'll sing a breath. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that it's um, very hard for me to sing any old Nagunim. I feel any Nagunim from the past these days. I feel like there's a in the Ruach of things that you're here for that it's all it's all a, a, a Zman Shalit Chachut. English, right? Not Hebrew. It's a, it's a Zman it's Mamash a Zman of Chachut of renewal that's coming through such such dire pain. However, it's Chadash. Everything is Chadash. And as the, I'm so happy everyone's here this morning. I'm so happy. I, I hope you guys can come for a Shabbos also once. And I just feel so blessed to be around such an army of Chavra that are mamash. They made Aliyah and they keep on making Aliyah every single day. That's if I have to describe the Chavra here. No one's under the illusion that they did the checkbox. Okay, I made Aliyah. I did it. They get the Chap that the real work only starts once you get here. And everyone's in a very deep zone of Asiyah, but Asiyah Pnimit, like, like, it's not just like let's run every second we can to help something. On the outside, it's deep heart work going on on the inside also, that we understand we're part of something that is the Or Chadash Al Tzion Shekvar Meir, that is already shining on us. And it's brutal. And it's Hamash brutal. Just yesterday we buried a neighbor, Tzadik, Gibor, Elkanah, Elkanah Neulander, Hashem Yikom Damo. And the Ruach of Gvura is very, in, in Beit Shemesh, you, you have it all the time. 
just this week also, it was Gavriel Bloom, right? The Anachno Be'itavut, and it's happening, and everyone's always asking, how do we hold on to this right now? How do we hold on to this awakening? How do we hold on to the Ahdas? And I just want to share this before I teach you this nigun, is that if someone if falls in love, I give you all a bracha that when you are dating and you know it's the one, you're supposed to say amen at that moment. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Unless you're all married, I just don't realize it. <laughs> I don't think it doesn't look like you're not a lot of talisim about Iceland. Okay. Um, but if you're asking yourself while you're what's called falling in love, how do I hold on to this? It means one thing, that you're not in it. It means you're observing it from the outside and trying to define it, and you're taking yourself out of it. So right now we're in it. We're still in it. It's not this man so much of all the planning of how exactly, like what they call in the Knesset, Hayom Shacharein. It's about allowing yourself to be in it and to lit om et nishmat am Yisrael. And that's a... It's as painful as it is, it's also one of the greatest chuyot that any of us could have ever dreamed for in our time. And um, I've been going to one of the places down south. There's a junction called Shuva. Have you heard of the Shuva Junction? Or Boaz, I'm sure you're in here. You've been there? Yeah, Shuva I mean, is the headquarters of Gan Eden in the midst of what was so much choshech. It's literally a spa that's kind of the place now where the chayalim... Do you mind just... Closing that, that, that door. Thank you so much. The Karastir of Eretz Yisrael. 100%. It's the Karastir of Eretz Yisrael. You know what a Pina Chama is for Chayalim, right? That place became almost overnight the Pina Chama for all the Chayalim that are going in and out of Aza. That's the spot. And you see them. They're coming out. They're coming. They're going, they're going in. And just Aves Yisrael. The Mashu Madhim. The amount of love and food and Sfarim. And doctors that are coming, their masseuses that are coming there. I saw a masseuse come and offer just tipulim on chayalim that are in and out of Aza. A- any type of chesed. This is psh, lo yuman. Lo yuman. And I've been going down on the trip, so that, that spot just, it, it's, I have, all of us, when you're there, you get a te'ima there. I was down there with, with Judah a few weeks ago, and, um, with, and a bunch of the chevra from here came, about 30, 40 chevra from the shul came too. Mm-hmm. And this nigun came down when I was there, when, I, when I was there, and usually nigunim do not come down with words for me. Sometimes people like the words come and then you write a nigun. For me, sometimes it takes a long time till words come with the nigun. But this was like shuvah you when know, we're there, and I was thinking like mamish. It's not exactly negative, but it's like kafikim by negative. But the most important thing is hazayrim bedima berina yitzayrim, and that's what we're saying. There's so much zriya bedima. And there's going to be so much Ketzira Berina. So much Ketzira Berina. It already is. It'll be weiter. More and more and more. So I just have to remember how it starts, and then I'll to teach it to you. Shu 
It's a Bemed Birshut, Birshut Rosh Yeshiva, and all the Chaveri Mikarim here. I feel so close to the, to, the, to Lev, like we just mentioned from the beginning. And even though I didn't go there, I didn't go anywhere. I, was, I went to Israeli, you know, I went to Ramat Gan, but from, you know, I, I feel so, I feel very mechubar when you're with something from the Hitavut, from the beginning. It's great, and with such, it, the shame told of the Yeshiva, Goes me'alume ever, and it brings a lot of a lot of simcha to Ami. So it should continue to bring a lot of simcha and koach when you hear the Leva Torah. It just should instantly bring koach to people. It's just instantly feel yesh ol. <laughs> it's going to be okay. And that's what I want to learn with for a few minutes with uh, with everyone here. Everyone knows that, and, and it's not, I'm not just saying this because I'm next to Reb Mordechai, but Rabbeinu Shag bekol gadol ain shum yehush ba'olam klal, right? So Rabbi Nachman screams and he says. There's no such thing as despair in the world. As much as I love that nigun, and I love those words, and we sang it even this morning, everyone at a certain point has to ask themselves, is that actually true? When you look at the matzav right now, when you look at, at Am Yisrael right now, look at what we've been going through, and what we're still in, yesh po be'emet, she'ela gdola of ma kore, le'ana kol olech, what is going on, and where are things heading? We know the gvura of the chayalim, kedoshe elion. Each one is Aaron Akoyan. Each one's going to the Kodesh Kodeshim every single day. We know that. We're aware of it, Baruch Hashem. Hashem yishmerem. Etzelem yikol tzara v'tzuka b'ezrat Hashem. Every second, every second. Kol shniya, kol shniya. Kedusha shel chayalim ha'giborim shelanu. But let me ask you, Chavir, you never had Yehush before? You never had despair before? So I want us to tune in to, I think, a secret that of, of connecting ourselves even stronger to the mahout of, of Mashiach and of where we have to be putting our focus on, and always, but especially days like today. I want to learn with you something very, very short. But it, it, to and I, I could learn this piece, and I should learn this piece every single day. And... Many people have experienced a certain level of yeush, on whatever level it is, of despair. And I want to speak about acknowledging that it's a real thing, and how it doesn't contradict what Rabbi Nachman said at all. I hope I have enough pages. I think I do. If not, you'll share. 
We're good? Okay. In order to understand what we're made out of, let's go to what the Midrash tells us about what we're made out of. Now, even though this Midrash that we're going to be learning, usually it's learned before Shavuos. It's learned around the time that we're about to receive the Torah. It's learned Parshat Bamidbar. But nonetheless, it's a, it's a Midrash that's really shaykh to every single day. The Midrash says like this, Seulis Rosh Kol Adas Bnei Yisrael. This has to do with the census, right? The counting that took place. It takes place a lot of times, but specifically the one that takes place before we got the Torah. So this is an amazing, this is, a, this is an amazing, amazing measure. The sha'a shekiblu Yisrael et ha-Torah nitkanu umot ha-olam ba'en At the moment the Rebbe Nishleim wanted to give us the Torah, there was jealousy amongst the nations of the world. Ma ra'u litkarev yoter min ha-omot? Why should they be closer than the rest of the world? Satan pihen HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You see this, by the way, you see this, this thing lately of the chayalim that are begging the, from the, chaz, chay, the chayalim that are in the battleground. There's one of these videos I love. They're, they're like looking into the camera and they're saying, Politikayim, Shadranim, anyone in Am Yisrael, Anachnu Ot Pola Milchama, we're here in the, in the battlefront. All we're asking is from anyone that doesn't have something really nice to say right now, Ana, Stemu have you seen this before? Stemu et Stemu et Please, just keep your mouth shut. So Hashem kept the mouths of the nations of the world shut. And what did, how did he keep them quiet? Bring me your Yechus book. Bring me your book of lineage. We actually know exactly when this day took place. This is called Yom HaMiyuchas. That's what it's called, Yom HaMiyuchas. Gimel Sivan, I think it is. The third day of Sivan. Right before Kabbalat Torah. It's interesting. We have to go and bring... So he said to them, be quiet. You can't bring me your Sefer Yichus like my children bring me the Sefer Yichus. That's the end of Sefer Vayikra. And then right afterwards it says, "Vayidaber Hashem mitbar Sinai se'u et rosh kol adad bnei Yisrael." The Yalkut says, "Shelo zachu li tol et haTorah ela bishvil hayuchsin shalahem." The only way we merited getting Torah, receiving Torah, is because of our yichus. Now you all know, you probably heard a lot of Hasidic tales that kind of like downplay yichus. You know, what's your yichus? It's like you know, my yichus. My yichus is, uh, should be more what I'm gonna, the house I'm going to be building. Why should I be tole on the yichus of where I came from? A yichus. You've heard that word before, yichus, right? But it seems that this word yichus is actually is actually a key in order to receive the Torah and in order that keeps the mouths of the world shut. And the mouths of the world, the last thing you could say about them these days is that it's shut. And all the hatred that we see, it's all the same inyan, kina. In this midrash is playing itself after, it's mamash, it's kina. They'd never say it in a million years. But it's jealousy. What are you, Amma Netzach? How, how could you still be around? How could it be that you haven't been completely demolished? It doesn't make any sense. So even though it comes out in what we call anti-Semitism, because it's, it's, and you're seeing it, most of you are, I assume, in, in, in New York area, in the East Coast, yeah? You're seeing it in ways that you probably thought you would never see it in your life. What's the shorish of it? The shorish of it is the same kina. How could these Yidlach, after everything they've been through, still hold their, hold, up, hold their face up high and believe that Hashem loves them? Where do you get that from? Where do you get that from? And Hashem shuts the mouths of the world saying, you bring me what you, where you came from, and my children will bring me where they came from, and then the game is over. So that's beautiful. It's a nice midrash. What is our Sefer Yuchsin is the question. What is our book of lineage? What does that mean that I look in the Sefer Yichus and the nations of the world are quiet? Like, what, what does that mean? Oh, I, I know I'm, Avra, I'm from Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. The Seder, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean to actually look in our Sefer Yichus and like, because it's a bayot, and that solves the problems. Mazal man. One of the tzaddikim that in this room last year with the women's year, we spent a whole year. I'm so proud of the chavir. You know, the adults here are learning every day. 
every single day. There's men's shirim and women's shirim, they're learning every day. It's a, like I told you, they keep on making aliyah. You know, it, it helps when people here have, you know, either their own hours or American hours, so they have the mornings and they're able to really, and they use it every single day. And with, on the women, we have, on, on Sunday and Thursdays, I teach the women. This has been like the mamashi yisod of the binyan. Remember when we were starting the, the building? I called my Rabbi Rav Weinberger and I said to him, what should be the begin, like the, what should be the dagesh in the <laughs> beginning already? He said, make sure that the women are learning pnimius, so that they basically, you know, the men don't come home all flying and everything and the wives are like, well, what's going on? I, I can't relate to that, you know. Make sure that the women, in women's shirim, they're learning pnimius. So, and the women, on Thursday mornings, this year we're doing a whole series from Rav Kluger with the women on Thursdays, but last year was all Reb Tzadok Akrain of Lublin. Anything I say about who Reb Tzadok is, was, it, it won't do any justice. I'm sure you've heard of Reb Tzadok before. I'm sure you know that he didn't start off as a chassid. I'm sure you know that he, he became the, probably the, the prime pupil of his Rebbe, the Meashilach, who completely changed his life. And Reb Tzadok is not that long ago. He was Nifter in 1901. It's funny when we say that number, because in our 1900s, feels a little bit closer than all these 18, 16, 17. Reb Tzadok was Nifter at an old age, and Reb Tzadok was a gone ilam. He was a giant, a genius, me'en kamayim. It's, it's hard to put into words. That's why a lot of the Litvish Chavra, when if they feel like they need to connect to Chassidus, they get it with Reb Tzadok, because his brain, the way he brings down Tarelach, not necessarily this one we're doing today, but it's very lumdus and it's it's very methodological and it's mamash banui be olamashel hatorah yishana and he has a lot a lot of svarim Reb Tzadok. I, uh, one guy said, "Oh, I got Reb Tzadok Sefer." He was so excited. I said, "Which one?" He said, "There's more than one." He thought he had the whole thing. He bought Tiskas <laughs> Tzadik. Like, uh, yeah, there's Dover Mesharim, Divrei Sofrim, Sichos Malachay Asharis, Pri Tzadik, a whole set on on on, on Parshias and Moadim. One of the sparm of Reb Tzadik is called Divrei Sofrim. And in Divrei Sofrim, Os Tetvav, I feel like this is, a, this is a short piece that is really going to answer the question, what is our yichus? And today we have to do the same thing. Where do we come from? How is it that we are the way they are? We, the way the, the, our, we are the way we are. Ech zeacholiot. It's great to sing, Am HaNetzach, Lo Mefached, Midarech Haruka. But lehavin etzeh, to understand that, the lehafnim etzeh, to lehafnim, to internalize it, right? lehafnim et atoda'a, to, to internalize the consciousness and awareness of what we really come from, is a game changer. Especially today, in the, in the metzius that we're all in, and I just want to say, Yishak Koch, that Yidavka, now you're all here. Lo pashut, lo muvan me'elav, and lo pashut. And it's a, We'll understand ourselves better. Why we feel like we're we're part of this of this kesem, why we why we feel we're part of this of this gula that we are. So Reb Tzadok says like this, and he starts off sounding very much like Rabbi, like Rabbi Nachman. There's no reason to despair over anything, anything. Ben ben guf ben ben Whether it comes to physical damage, physical problems, or whether it's soulful in Yanim. Ki ein yeush klal etzel ish yehudi. There's nothing like this. There's no yeush by a yid. V'ashem itbarach yachol la'azor b'chol in Yan, and Hashem can help in every single matter. It's interesting that this sounds mamish like it's from Likutei Maran. Reb Tzadok was not a, a, a breast lover. However, Reb Tzadok knew Rabbi Nachman's Torahs inside out. And we have, a, there's even a parish of Reb Tzadok on Reb Nachman Sefer Hamidus. And there was always breast of his farm by Reb Tzadok. <laughs> Where? <laughs> oh, Kien Yush Klal, it's a... <laughs> so he's still keeping his own identity a little bit. Kien Yush Klal, it's an issue. The Yehush, despair, has no shaykhs by any yid. End of Al-Kazeh. And he's going to contradict himself in a second, okay? The building of the Jewish people, the building of the Umay Yisraelit, When did the building of the Jewish people, this is our Yichus book, when did the building of the Jewish people begin? After complete Yehush. <laughs> so wait a second. 
before we even continue. Yes, Yehush or Ain Yehush? He starts off saying, Ain Yehush Bichlal, right? And then he says, and you know, the beginning of the building of the Jewish people, you know when it began? After Yehush Gamur, after there was complete despair. So which one is it? Is there despair or isn't there despair? So he's saying to us something very deep over here. The beginning of the Jewish, building of the Jewish people began after there was total despair. By who? By people you would think would never have despair in their life. I say for Yichus, Avram and Sarah. De Avraham de Sarah skenim, they're old. Shelo ala al dat adam lamin ze. No one would have believed that they could still have children. Ve'afilu achar aftachat amalach, even after the angel promised. Right? Like, for instance, the angel promises, and what's the name of their child? What's another name for, for their child? Think about it. What's another name you, you would give the child of Avram and Sarah, another meaning of the name based on the name that they gave him? What does it mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It means Yehush. Yitzchak is code word for Yehush. Do you realize this? <laughs> right? When you laugh at something, it's because inside you, you you don't believe it could ever happen, right? You know, today it's very interesting. We've been talking a lot of, a lot, about it a lot with the chevring here. There's this, um, there's this funny inyan that when people unfortunately try to, you know, label from Yidin as like dangerous a little bit, so they'll call them ha-meshichim ha-elu. Those kitsonim meshichim, those messianic ones, right? If we're not messianic, if we're not meshichi, b'muvan ha-geulati, I, I don't know what we are, right? But it's calling it out for what it is. But many people, they laugh at the ka-meshichah. <laughs> Yehush. Sarah and Avram, Avram Avinu and Sarah Imenu, their son's name is basically Yehush. But it's the whole Indian is changing that, understanding that Reb is going to show us that I could raise my hand here to answer the question myself, but I think you would too if you were bold enough to do it. Has anyone here despaired before? <laughs> no, any Yush Ba'olam Klal. A breast lover would never raise his hand. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like this, like, you know, Rappi Tom, how could I, how could I raise my hand? But each and every one of us has had those moments when we said, Ribbon Shleinam, it's been nice. I think, uh, I think I'm out. Gamal Nuh, or at least I'm out for the night, or at least I'm out for this Shabbos. Not, not to go out in Mechalel. No, that's what I'm talking about. But the whole Emuna trip, the whole thing gets so intense. Things that we dreamed about and that we lost, they all they get lost at a certain point. So each of us has experienced at a certain point in our lives despair. Each of us has had that. And you know why? Because it's in our DNA. Our Sefer Yichus shows us that where we come from is kind of even the has a shoresh of Yehush in it. Shelo alal da'at adam la'amin ze v'afilu achar aftachat amalach No one believed that they would be able to have children. Like today, no one really believes that we could actually hear, like, like be'emet, we believe, be'emunah shlema, but when we open our eyes to believe that kacha, melo chola aretz kevodo, shalom beinenu, v'gerush kol oiveinu, yemach shemam, no one believes, no one really says, it's like a, it's like a, <laughs> Alevai. But you know already, obviously, Alevai is the same letters as your name. And that's what Eliyahu Anavi brings, right? Eliyahu brings Mashiach, Eliyahu Anavi comes, Eliyahu is the same letters as Alevai. Eliyahu comes, the Mashiach consciousness says, take all your Alevais and don't give up on them. Alevai Zeltiot Eliyahu. Take all of your Alevais and bring them, bring them in right now. Sarah believed Hashem could do anything. This is the Indian. Having Yehush doesn't mean you don't believe in God. You just think it's not for you. Sarah tzadika yada ve'emina da Hashem itbarach kol yachol. That God can do anything. Ve'im kol zeh, and even though she believed in Hashem, even though you and I believe in Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, we believe in Hashem, im kol zeh, tzachaka v'kirba. She still laughed. She was she felt it was so far from, from her to believe that it could actually happen. Why? 
I love this piece because she says, oh, my husband, you know, he, he's so old, as if she was like 25, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she knew how old her husband was, but then he ends off, thank God he ends, v'chen ziknata. Yeah, she wasn't exactly you know, 25, right? She's like, okay, Hashem could do anything, but come on, al piteva, my husband's, you know, ototo 100, I'm turning 90 kilo. She, again, we know that we believe in Hashem, and yet we still have moments of yush. And that should, we have to be dvonen we have to think about that for a second, and to realize Sarah Imenu was also in that same category. I know it seems like this is like Khalila Kfira, what I'm saying, but the name, the boy's name is Yitzchak. The boy's name is Yitzchak, and the Torah is teaching us something so profound, so profound. If it was just Hashem's will, that they should just get married and have a kid, he would have done it a long time ago. How old were Avram and Sarah when they got married? We don't know exactly. But from what age do we know for sure they were together? At least Avram, 65 and 75. Let's, let's go into the premise that they, you know, I don't know back then, again, ages, I don't know what the norm was in terms of age when you gave birth. But what Ritzadik is saying is that if the Rebunish them just want them to have a child so they could have a family, and that there would just be hidden in the world, then he would have made her pregnant much earlier. Why? Because we have a cloud. There's a cloud we have that when there's no need for a miracle, it's always better like that to not have miracles. Why? Why do you think? Why, why is it? Why, why is it? If there's an Indian of should there be a miracle or not, why is it probably better in the bigger picture for there not to be a miracle to be made? Yeah. Shem wants to wants to uphold the teva so he can be he can be he can be in Astara and then not like openly like visible and like therefore not allowing for Bukhira. Right. So the, the, the last thing you said is Mamash the key over here is like, because if I Hashem performs a mi- miracle, what's the big chap that I start believing in the Rebona Shleim? It's not, I mean, it's, it's Givad, but what's the big deal? Right? It's Betoch HaTeva, Betoch Chukei HaBriya. The way Hashem decided, Lachkok et, 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 et Abriya, finding Hashem in there, that's the way Hashem always ideally prefers things to go. So Reb Tzaddik is saying, if Hashem wanted it to be that they should just have a child and that there should be Hem Shechiyut, he would have done that much earlier. But the Chap is, the first Jewish boy that's born as a Yid is something else. He plants the seeds for the whole Sefer Yuchsin, for the for you and I today. Aval be'emet me'et Hashem ha'itazot she'ye binyan ha'uma dafka achar ha'yush ha'gomor. Reb Tzadik says, this is the Inyan. Hashem's ratzon was that the building of the Jewish people should take place after there was complete yeush. That was the that's the in, that's the kavana. That Yitzchak should be born, the first p- child, the first baby that's born as a yid, should be born after his parents experienced complete despair and gave up on it. Why? Because no one believed. And Sarah Imenu didn't believe that she would, have, she would have children. Why? The second to bottom paragraph, because really what makes us Yidin is the following. That you should never ever give up, especially when you already gave up. <laughs> it sounds funny, right? You should never ever give up. You know when he's talking about? Especially, especially when you've already given up, just like it was with the first Jew. HaKadosh Baruch Hu could always help, Vayipalem HaShem Davar, is anything too big for God to take care of? Ve'en lachkor b'chakirot, lama asa HaShem kacha, this is one of the hardest things. This is something Rabbi Nachman warned his Talmidim over and over again. Do nev- don't ever go into chakiras. You know what chakiras are? Not, I'm not talking about like learning like a shita's brisk, a chakira, learning a sugya. I'm talking, you know what a chakira means? In, in, in modern Hebrew, what, what's a chakira? Investigation. Chakira, oh, nichnas lechakira. Someone got a, arrested, v'aleinu, nichnas lechakira. He's going into investigation. Chakira, lachkor chakirot, means that you could figure out why Hashem does what He does. That you actually know. Do any of us understand? Lama asa Hashem kacha b'simchat Torah? And, and, and Mechilov was saying this, but even when people are saying, 
any reason, even if it's the holiest reason, our shita is, I, personally, I stay very, very far away from ever trying to say anything on, on those lines of, oh, look how much sin aschinam. It's all, of course there was, and that should be something that we should always work on. But still, does that explain why the atrocities happened? The, the level of atrocity? But what's for sure is that a normal, like a, a natural people that don't have the Sefer Yuchsin would look at their lives and say, they killed six million of us, we came back here, built Eretz Yisrael, and this is still part of the script? That these kind of things could still happen to Jewish people? Yehush makes most sense in the world for anyone that's working just with a non Sefer Yuchsin like we have. Because it's almost there. It just doesn't add up. I'll give you an example. My grandmother, my father's mother. My father's mother jumped off the train on the way to Auschwitz. She was in that same cattle car with her mother and some of her sisters. She was very short. She was very skinny. Probably very frail by then too. And her mother told her that if she squeezes between the barbed wire that they left on the, you know, on each cattle car, there was like a little window with barbed wire. You've seen pictures of it, right? The trains. So she said to her daughter, to my grandmother, you, you could actually make it if you do it. And there was a stool in there, in the cattle car, and she stood on the stool, and she looked at her mother and her sisters one time, and she jumped out. And hit her head on a rock, she probably passed out. I don't know exactly those details because she didn't speak about it too much. And her great-grandchildren are being born in Yerushalayim. Now the end of that story should not include and her great-grandchildren are, ex- are, are privy to other Jewish children in Eretz Yisrael being mutilated. It doesn't, the law, I'll pee the script, it doesn't add up, nachon? Yehush Gamur. Yehush Gamur. What else do we need? And that's why Reb Tzadik says, this is your story. This is Yitzchak Avinu, his shining light in your story, explains how you still have koyach today, to get up and realize, yesh po mashu yotel gadol. You know, Hashem knows exactly what everyone needs before the Makkah, right? Because of the music world, I, I have the privilege of being close to a lot of these chevra that, that are very famous today, right? Because... Back in the day, they weren't, and they'd come to our concerts, and, you know, that, that's how it was. It's just the, I remember Yishai Rebo coming to, you know, I remember him opening one time for us, and he's like so shy, and, you know. Uh, one, of the, one of the chaverim is, that I'm very, very close to, is Hanan ben Ari. You know Hanan ben Ari, right? And Hanan is a big, big neshama. Not, bemet. A big neshama. A few months ago, he showed up at my house here. I live right, around, right here. It's like almost midnight. Came with a, b- a bunch of bureka sim. It's like banu rasot malavim malka, and he, we, we were we were in the shul till like four in the morning. We brought him here. Ish pele, Mehmet, We became very very close. He put out an album a few months before the war, and it's called Yesh Kan Yotel Miza. Yesh Kan Yotel Miza. It's an amazing deep deep song. Aval Yesh Kan Yotel Miza. Yesh Kan Tamid Yotel Mehayeush. There's always more. Always. It's some pele. That's why Reb Tzodok is warning you, he's saying, don't go into Chakiras, you'll get stuck to a place of saying, En kan yoter mize, evanti, evanti. Rabbi Nachman warns us by learning Sfarim of Mechakrim and Philosophim, because he says that in that world of Mechakrim, anyone can go inside that world, but not everyone can come out alive. Reb Tzodok is telling us something a little bit different. But the same, the same point. He's saying, what's going to be in the future with Mashiach? Like he says in the bottom paragraph. V'chena Yeshua de'la'atid. De'la'atid ne'emar, mi he'emin lishmuateinu. Who's going to believe? Who's going to believe our Besora? Who's going to believe that this actually, that our people, after everything, that we're still believing that it's going to happen and that it is happening? Who's going to believe it? And now this, this explanation now is like the first time that Gemara made sense to me. 
The Gemara in Sanhedrin says, "En ben David ba ad sheyiti Yashu min ha'geula." What a chap! What does the Gemara say? When is Mashiach going to come? When everyone gives up on Mashiach. So I never, I mean, I, I, all the all the tirutzim I heard, all the explanations I heard in the past for that Gemara, it still left me a little bit confused. The Gemara says in the Sanhedrin, Mashiach is only going to, going to come when everyone gives up on him coming, right? But based on what we're learning here, what, what, what Reb Tzodek is saying over here is that when is Mashiach going to come is when everyone has tasted Yehush and still believe. It's like, Everyone has to go through this, is what he's saying. Everyone has to go to a certain point in your life where you're done with all the, uh, like, with all the nice thank you Hashem words. Do you know what I mean? Like, at a certain point, at a certain point in life, you, 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 I hope I, you understand what I'm saying. I, I'm not chas I'm trying to say that, to try to bring any kind of foreign thoughts to you, but I'm saying at a certain point in life, with so much pain, you stand before the Yavon and you say, you know, I'll believe in you forever. But, Maza, Azuz Dikdusha. You know when I saw that for my, the first time in my own eyes, Hoshana Raba morning, probably 10 years ago, with the Leviahs of Rav Eitan Henkin and his wife. I forget her name. Remember that? Yeah. Yuman. This was a couple, Tamir uh, Chacham, I have a safer on that. And the Aruch HaShulchan, he put out a sefer on the Aruch HaShulchan. Of Henkin, the, the son of Rebbe Tzan Henkin from uh, uh, Nishmat, I think she is, right? <laughs> they were killed in the car, the children in the back seat. And it was, it was, it was mamash, uh, one of those moments of just chor balev, chor anak balev, and, and Hoshana Rabba, what are we doing? And, and then you're going into Sukhul Stara. <laughs> Crazy when, when things happen, right? And the father, I think he was Nifter, right? I think two years ago. His father of Henkin stood at his son's cavern, his daughter-in-law's cavern. And I remember at Harmanuchos, I was so far from Amakoy, and I, I couldn't go close to Bichla, but so far, and he said, Yibon Shleilam, Ani Ma'amin Lecha, Ma'amin Becha. Ava Lefamim, Ani Pashut Lo Mevin Otcha. And it's like, there has to be room in our godly service, in our godly experience, to admit that. Hashem knows we're human. Hashem knows we're human. This is what's called, every one of us has to go to a place of la'achar hayush. And when everyone gives themselves enough space to completely have yush, to give themselves the space to feel like this is, it's all over. En ben David ba ad sheyiti ashum in ha Then Mashiach comes when everyone's gone through this already, and the, and the nation has gone through this so much. Anyone that tells you you have to walk around and just say, Gamzul Tova, Gamzul Tova, after what we're experiencing right now, he's shayach to previous generations. He's not shayach to this generation. Even though that's emes, that's an emes of Olam Ha'emet. We're still here. There has to be an experience that we go through that feels like it's total yeush. And therefore... Therefore, Yeshaya Novi tells us to get through anything in life, always go back to your Sefer Yuchsin. Ken Amar, Habitu El Avraham Avichem, Ve'el Sarah Techol Alchem. Always go back. Don't, what does it mean? I remember I'm from Avraham Yitzchak and Yaakov. It's Arif Karach and Leah. Remember that moment in life when Hashem Barach decided when and how he decided to begin a binyan called Am Yisrael. The gam hatchalat binyanchem hayaken achar yeush. You're ready now for a building, for a building of Mashiach, just like your family started. It started after that place, after that nekuda, after yeush. So I want to give us a bracha that you, you learn a Torah like this, and it's not a vort you give over at a Shabbos table. It's a vort you. It's a Torah you you have to cry over. It's, it's a Torah that has to be. Part of the way I say Hashiva Shaftinu Kivarishana, which also seems like it's Achar Yehush, you know. But anything, any any type of Hashma Kuleinu, Hashma Kuleinu, we're running from Levaya to Levaya. You know how many times we've been to Kfar Tzion, the, the the cemetery in Kfar Tzion this month? It, it, it's it's mind boggling. It's Yehush after Yehush after Yehush, Binyan after Binyan after Binyan. This 
concept drives Uma Sa'olam crazy. This is the kina that they don't have the Sefer Yichus. Why Hashem decided for it to be like this? Again, it is what it is. This is how we came into being as a mishpacha, and this is how the mishpacha is going to last forever. So now is the time to hold on tighter than ever, because there is a new binyan, and it's only coming out of Eretz Yisrael, and hopefully we're purifying and refining ourselves for new oil, and given by, by producing new kalim, new kalim of relationship with the Rebona Shalayim, it should just be Hashem Yitbarach from this second on, just Bechesed. Just Berachamim. Just Bechesed and just Berachamim. Yomar Letzalotainu Dai. And I'm thinking like Hashem Yitbarach, look, we have a bunch of Yidin that, that they, they've given up and they haven't given up. And they're still here. And we're still here. Just Asay Laman Tinokot Shabet Raban. Asay Laman Lamanenu. And if not for us, then, 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 then for you. Yomar Letzalotainu Dai. Bezrat Hashem ki ayin ve'ayin yiru, we'll see with our own eyes all the Yehush we ever had coming back to us and saying, this is what actually brought you the Geula, that you nafalta, hitiashta, ki nafalti, kamti. And he got back up again. How? It's in my DNA. I can't explain it. I'm a Jew. That's what it means to be a Jew. That's what it means to look in your Sefer Yilsin. And when you go back to the Midrash, it seems to be like the Midrash says, Lo zachuli tolta Torah, ela bishvil ayuchsin shalayim. It's the way we hold on to Torah. It's the way we hear the new besorah of Torah today. And we should have the privilege of learning many, many more times together, and davening many more times together, and being besimcha many more times together. Mm-hmm. And I hope you, we have bemet, you have the most productive, meaningful tkufa that you're here right now. And alavai, alavai, alavai. Um, it, it was a one-way ticket. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're from Leva Torah. It's you know it's an Amen can hear that song. All right, Shakayach everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. I'm just thinking Please. that um Yitzhak with the Yitzhak is the Yesh. So Rabbi Akiva, what did he do? He receives the Khorban and everyone else is crying. Mm. Maybe it's connected to, to the last Yitzchak. We don't believe him. It's hard to believe. We can't believe that it's going to be better. And yet, we know it's going to be It will be. Akiva. Okay, well. so, uh, uh, you just said it. I said it. <laughs> what? Oh, but, yeah. Getting up in the morning is <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely the, yeah, it's the light of, it's that Sameh Duyak. It's funny that the, whenever I heard that story when I was younger, First time I heard it, I always felt like Be'emet Be'mechilaf. I was standing there with 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 the Tanaim and, and Rabbi Akiva started. I would I'm a koyan. I have this you know, kind of this little bit of a not, not an outer temper but an inner temper, right? I would have I would have been really. I think it'd be so impossible for me to relate to Rabbi Akiva. It'd be like I, I got to get out of here. I, I can't be around this. I just can't be around this. And yet, I'm looking in my, our own lives, and like all of us, are, and all of us right now are at the Tikkun of Talmudi Rabbi Akiva. Hen, hen mitzad the Achva Bezrat Hashem, and hen mitzad taking that Torah of, of of bringing this Nachama Akiva Nichamtanu of being able, even today, to walk with Rabbi Akiva through Beiri through 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 these places, and 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 and, and still saying, Yesh kan yotel miza, with a nigun. שניסקה, שניסקה ל ל ל ל ל ל ל ל ל ל